Hello everyone, a very good afternoon. I hope everyone is uh, keeping safe. So this is the part three of the self-supervised learning series where uh, I'll be talking, I'll be giving actually a quick overview of different self-supervised learning approaches that people have used. And this won't be uh, a detailed explanation of any of the approaches, but just a quick overview of uh, what are the various uh, strategies people have implemented in this field. Maybe in future when I, uh, uh, read maybe the paper in detail i'll then put out more uh, information in detail but for now let's let's get started so this is one statement from Jan, one of Jan Lacun lectures where he says, what are we missing from current deep learning methods to learn properly? So one is uh, obviously to marry deep learning with reasoning. So although a lot of progress have been made still now, we are, you know, we cannot explain everything about, uh, you know, all the decisions. And then another is the ability of machines to learn background knowledge from the data, just from observation without binding them to any task. And this unsupervised or self-supervised representation learning is one way to do that to learn representation without binding it to any task and this is a snippet from this website called papers with code and here are the you know top ranked model based on the top one accuracy on the ImageNet data set and these are all the implemented self-supervised learning approaches and as you can see in the top 10 are three papers and they are from Google, they DeepMind, and Facebook, and all are published this year, 2020. So you can imagine this this topic, this area is really hot, and researchers are investing a lot of time and putting out really good good uh, research to you know advance the field of learning from un, uh, learning from unlabeled data. So let's get started. So basically, uh, based on my readings or whatever I I could read by now, I uh, I found that people mainly categorize the different self-supervised learning approaches they have implemented under this three category so one is the pretext task based then another is the generative model based and another is the contrastive learning based or the discriminative based and these are some examples so we'll uh, discuss about it so let's first uh, discuss this pretext task based so as you know uh, i discussed in the introductory video so pretext task means a prox proxy task that you design for the model to learn from the unlabeled data and here you, you need not uh, you know give any explicit labels just some proxy task proxy labels that the model can learn from the data and once uh, it learns then you can transfer it to the main task and one such proxy task is predicting the rotation but there are many and I would encourage you to uh, see Professor Zizeman's slide. So uh, he has very nicely summarized all the approaches. And another is this uh, YouTube lecture from uh, Professor Alexi F. Rose. He has also summarized uh, very nicely the different self-supervised learning approaches. And many of the uh, contents that I, I, I'll, I'll just discuss today, it's from their slide. So one is this relative positioning. So it's, I think the picture is self-explanatory, but the idea is that you will take a patch, uh, a query a key patch, and then you'll take a query patch and the task that the pretext task that is designed is that you have to predict the position of this query patch. So it would look something like this. So if you number your patches as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is your key patch so your input will be a key patch and a query patch and output will be position that is number three so the idea is in order for the network to predict the position of this uh, query patch it should understand the semantic of the image then only it can predict that the ear falls at three with respect to this eyes and nose center so in this quest the network will learn good representation and uh, yeah that's the idea and this is uh, uh, this is the result from the paper where they try to do a nearest neighbor visualization so we have an input patch and then they compare with different approaches so obviously the image net pre-trained based will learn you know good pre-trained features the random initialization does not run good features as you can see comparing the query to the retrieved patches but the relative positioning uh, self-supervised approaches it has learned you know pretty good uh, representations so that was there yeah. and then they use this uh, to do a transfer transferring to the main task that was uh, pascal voc detection they use it here and these are the results so with relative positioning you know they got a six percent boost up compared to no pre-training so I'm, I'm not going to show this <clears throat> result comparison for all the approaches just i will give uh, what what the task exactly is that uh, the authors designed 
so this is another task called colorization another pretext task where given a one channel monochrome image you have to predict the color of the image and this is example where suppose the image is in lab color space so your input would be l channel and the output of that uh, output ta output that in the model need to predict would be the a and b channel so this is the pretext task or the self supervised learning task and in this way you get this free supervisory signals and this is uh, one example from that uh, uh, this was a video it's not playing okay okay so maybe you can visit this uh, website I'll, I'll also put in the description and it's really nice uh, some things happened here it's not playing okay so if you see this uh, yeah so this is the results so this uh, was the non-color image and this was the, what model has predicted so it looks pretty cool and i think uh, in youtube lately uh, colorizing the you know old black and white video is also getting popular so this is one task and they could see that uh, uh, with this kind of colorization the segmentation uh, when they transfer it to the segmentation task it, it shows an improvement and then the, another task is this predicting the rotation so you just rotate the image and then the pretext task here is to predict the degree of rotation so as you can see here so you just take a random image no need to assign any labels rotate it and you task a network to predict it's 0 degree 90 180 or 270 and here also as you can see the rotation pre-training improved as compared to the random results and then another task is this uh, multiple pretext tasks. So as you see previously, either colorization or uh, relative positioning or uh, rotation, they were just pre uh, you know uh, training on one task. But here we'll have multiple tasks. So in addition to rotation, the network is tasked also to predict the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, the sharpness, and the solarization. And the network would, would look something like this, um, where you'll have a base. Uh, base model and then you'll have branches for each of the tasks like here rotation solarization and then another popular task is the jigsaw puzzle where you take you know by random patches shuffle it and then task of the network is to you know uh, arrange these patches in correct order so these all are pretext task based model uh, pretext task based self supervised model which people have used and there are many more but uh, for now uh, i just uh, picked out few and then let's discuss what are the generative based uh, pretext or the self supervised representation learning that people have done so the simplest one as you can imagine is the auto encoder so here we'll have the uh, uh, a representation network to learn the representation and a generator network to learn or to generate the say some data from the representation so as you can see here uh, autoencoder is pretty simple you'll have the input and uh, you'll encode it to some uh, representation and from that representation then you reconstruct the input and some similar idea was implemented here in this paper called context encoder where you have an image and you cut out a patch of it and you task the network to generate this area which is missing now this image that you see is the reconstruction just based on the L2 loss and this is the reconstruction based on L2 and adversarial loss and this idea was further extended in this paper self-supervised feature learning for semantic uh, segmentation of overhead imagery so although this picture is generated by me it was uh, the actual paper it did on satellite image so here instead of uh, you know cropping out one patch you can crop out multiple patch and task the network to you know fill out those patches and this is really interesting paper so i came to know about this uh, while i was attending one workshop on representation learning uh, this is from google deep mind and here the idea is you have a scene and you give us input two views like view one and view two and then there's a representation network which learns the uh, representation maybe i'll use this pointer yeah it, it will learn this representation from these two views and then you give a query as to a new view which the network has not seen and it will predict the new view so this video uh, actually i'll share the link but there's a video here which very nicely demonstrated so once the network has learned the representation you can query it any view and it will generate that view for that image so it has learned the semantics the geometry of the different objects and the shapes so you can read this blog this is a re really good blog there okay so let me go to the next one
yeah and then there is this uh, bidirectional GAN so basically uh, just a second I will take a pointer yeah so basically what happens if you know the basic working of a gen generative adversarial network will have a discriminator network and a generator network so discriminator network will discriminate between real and fake samples and generator network will then generate samples based on the representation but in representation learning we don't have a representation network to generate the representation from the input so the authors designed this called bidirectional GAN where they have uh, a representation network as well and in the discriminator they not only feed the input samples they also feed the learned representation and this is the idea for this uh, bi GAN or bidirectional GAN and the results as well are pretty cool Another method is called split brain autoencoders. So the idea is of the autoencoder itself, but here uh, the learning takes place by doing a cross channel prediction. So what happens is we have say uh, two sets subsets of input x1, x2, and then we have two sub network f1 and f2. The network f1 is tasked to predict x2 and the network f2 is tasked to predict x1. So if you imagine this input x and it has two color space l and ab, so f1 will predict uh, this ab color space and f2 will predict the l color space and that would be combined. So this is another uh, uh, self supervised learning method. So yeah, basically these are some of the approaches. There are more. And then there is this discriminative based or the contrastive learning based approaches. 